This motion. Eugenie Sage. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, the Green Party supports the Government Notice of Motion for alterations to the appropriations for the Officers of Parliament, the Office of the Auditor-General, the Ombudsman, the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment and the appropriations for 2013-14. Uh, and in my short call, I would just like to focus on the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment. Because the mission of the Parliamentary Commissioner, as the Office has interpreted that under the Environment Act, is, and I quote, to maintain or improve the quality of the environment by providing robust, independent advice that influences decisions. And as um, Marion Street has noted, the officers are reporting to this parliament, um, but nevertheless they make a number of uh, recommendations to ministers. And, Mr Speaker, I think the recommendation of the Officers of Parliament um, Committee to increase the funding for the Parliamentary Commissioner by 100,000 is something that we would certainly support. It's a very modest increase. The office only has a staff of 17. Um, it works very thoroughly in doing its reports, does quite a lot of analysis, and yet it has a budget with this modest increase of 100,000 that will bring it up to only 2.726 million. So it's a very cost-effective um, office. And it has, as others have said, had to absorb quite numerous cost increases over the last six years when its budget um, has remained the same. And, Mr Speaker, I'd like to place on record um, the Green Party's thanks for a lot of the work that the staff and the office do. They have made um, some landmark reports. There was one on 1080 in 2011, which very carefully analysed the evidence and evaluated the use of 1080 and recommended that it should continue. In fact, the report there recommended that the uh, use should be expanded, because as the Parliamentary Commissioner noted, there is more Crown funding provided to the Animal Health Board uh, to control TB. Uh, and kill possums to achieve that, uh, then there is provided to the Department of Conservation for it to spend on controlling possums, rats and stoats over the entire conservation estate. And, Mr Speaker, that's why this Parliament and the Executive needs to listen more carefully to the recommendations of the Parliamentary Commissioner because it is robust and independent advice. And yet we haven't seen an increase in Department of Conservation funding to enable it to do better pest control. Instead, that funding's been cut. There have been a number of other landmark reports by the office. One of those was on wild rivers or hydroelectricity in May last year. And there the office recommended that there should be uh, much more proactive work done to protect rivers for their wild and scenic values, that water conservation orders should be strengthened. Yet we haven't seen that in the government's proposals for water reform. We have seen the opposite, a weakening of water conservation orders. And again, with the um, Longfin Eels report, the value of the work that the Parliamentary Commissioner has done there is to take a species which is not cute like the kiwi or comical like the kia, um, to use the Parliamentary Commissioner's own words, but to actually very closely look at the threats to Longfin Eel to come out with a reasoned recommendation that commercial fishing be suspended until it can be shown that the Longfin uh, population has recovered. Government needs to take that recommendation uh, seriously. And, Mr Speaker, the recommendations of the office are sometimes not popular because, as the mission statement um, notes, it's about providing robust and independent advice. So, as a member of the Local Government and Environment Select Committee, I'd like to record my thanks when the office makes submissions on legislation, as it has done on changes to the Resource Management Act and as it has done on the government's um, discussion document on the Act. And the Parliamentary Commissioner then said that these changes to the RMA, which would um, strip out some of the criteria in Part 2, would erode the environmental protections in the Resource Management Act and tilt it towards promoting economic development. When you have the Parliamentary Commissioner saying that, it needs to be taken seriously. The Office also has quite an important educative function, and it produced a very useful report on water quality um, and understanding the science of water quality to help inform public debate. And I hope that ministers have read that report 
because there are a number of issues in terms of nitrate nitrogen pollution, sediment pollution, which the current push towards expanding irrigation just seems to have not recognised that the more you expand irrigation, the more you intensify um, agriculture, the more nitrogen um, you have in waterways. And one of the key issues that my colleague Gareth Hughes alluded to was state of the environment reporting, because it has been a promise of the government um, since 2008 that there would be an Environmental Reporting Act to require independent and yearly, five yearly state of the environment reporting. And yet we have seen scant progress here. Um, government has last year decided to stop producing consolidated nationwide state of the environment reporting, and yet we are one of the few countries in the OECD that doesn't have a legislative basis for national reporting on the state of the environment. The Parliamentary Commissioner has um, got a potential responsibility for this role, but her office needs to be resourced by an extra $1.3 million annually to carry out that role because she has estimated um, that it would take nine additional staff to do that reporting, and if work is to be done um, and a report produced, that would have to start now. So, Mr Speaker, the recommendations in these reports need to be taken more seriously. The government needs to listen specifically where there are recommendations to ministers. But we thank and congratulate all of the officers of parliament for their work and appreciate the robust and independent advice that they provide. Thank you. Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, this notice of motion, as we've heard, is the process by which parliament alters the appropriate.